Hi everyone, this is Naveen and here is my teach one for the class HAP 725 Statistical Process Improvement. My teach one mainly concentrates on downloading and installing Python, reading and plotting data. This module specifically concentrates on reading and plotting the data. Now that we have an idea of how Jupyter Notebook and Python work, we shall get into a bit more complex concept of reading the data present in a file and visualizing the related data. We shall use pandas to read the data from files and matplotlib.pyplot to visualize the data. Pandas is an inbuilt package in Python which is used to deal with data related tasks. So at first we need to import pandas which can be used in the specific file. So the code to import pandas would be import pandas as pd. pd is an alias given to pandas. And now that we have pandas imported, we can read the data from files in our system. You should make sure that you are using the correct type of function to read the data based on the file type. If you are using an Excel file, you must use pd.read underscore Excel. And if you are using a CSV file, you must use pd.read underscore CSV. And these being functions, you need to have parentheses after them. In the parentheses, you need to mention the path of the file wherein the file is located on your system. The R at the beginning signifies that the backslashes which are used in the path are interpreted by Python as actual black backslashes and not some special characters. Now that we have read the data, we must make sure that we are storing the data in some data frame. So it, it, we can say that data equals in the whole of pd.readXL and the path. Now the data read from this file is stored in a data frame called data. To look at how the data is imported, you can either just say data in a cell or you can say data.head. When you just say data, it would display all the rows in that specific data frame. And if you say data.head, the first five rows are belonging to that specific data frame would be displayed. Head is a function which generally displays the first five rows in the data frame. But if you shall wish to display the top 10 rows instead of five, you can say data.head of 10. Now that we have imported data from a file into a data frame in Python, we can use the data in this specific data frame to visualize it. As I mentioned previously, matplotlib.pyplot is used to visualize the data. In the same way as I imported pandas, I would import this specific package. I would say import matplotlib.pyplot as pld. And once again, pld is an alias given to the matplotlib.pyplot. It just makes typing easier instead of typing the whole thing. So the next statement would be plotting the data in that specific data frame. So at first I would say data which is the name of the data frame dot plot of on the x-axis I would need time. So I would mention the name of the column in single quotes. So the, since the name of the column is time, I would say x equals time, comma y equals observed value. Observed value is the name of the column in the data frame. And the type of chart I would need is a line chart. So I would say comma kind equals line. And the marker option would specify how would you want to display the specific data points in your visualization chart. I would like them to be a thick circle instead of a small dot. So I would say marker equals and in single quotes I would say O and then I would close the parentheses. 
the next statement being plt dot x label of time. This signifies that I am giving a label to the x axis. It is a good practice to assign labels and legends to the visualization plot so that it gives the viewer a better idea. The same thing with plt dot y label of observed value. I'm making sure that I'm assigning a specific label to the y axis. As of now, I've just plotted two columns from our data frame which are called time and observed value. I'm yet to plot the maximum value and the minimum value. And as you can see, the maximum and minimum values are constant across the whole data frame. So these things would be horizontal lines in the visualization chart. So I would say plt dot h lines. So h lines signifies horizontal values, sorry, horizontal lines. And the value for the maximum would be 52.5 and for the minimum, it would be 12.5. So I would say y equal to and the specific value. And again, in these specific maximum and minimum values, we have a slight variation. We should differentiate between pre-intervention and post-intervention. So I have used thick, thick line for pre-intervention and a dashed line for post-intervention. So we can see that from the values of 1 to 7, we have pre-intervention. So for pre-intervention, the x minimum is 1 and the x maximum is 7. I have used the color red for these horizontal lines and gave them a label of pre-intervention. The same thing with post-intervention, but I have added an option of line styles, which is dashed. By default, the line would be a thick line. So since I want the line to be dashed, I would add an option which is called line styles and it is equal to dashed. And for post intervention, the x minimum would be 9 and the x maximum would be 18. This summarizes the plt.x lines. And now I shall move on to plt.x ticks. If you do not mention plt.x ticks, the values on the x axis can be randomly set to any value. So we, we might see values which are decimals for time. But since they do not make any sense, we must make sure that we use the appropriate points as in the data frame. So by mentioning plt.x ticks, we are ensuring that we are plotting the data at the exact points as per our requirement. So by mentioning plt.x ticks of data of time, you are assigning values in the data of time column to the values in the x-axis in the visualization chart. And then plt.legend is used to have a legend at the top so that the viewer can get a better understanding of the whole chart. You can clearly see that the blue line is related to the observed value. A thick red line relates to pre-intervention and a dashed line relates to post-intervention. A legend, having a legend is always a good practice is what I feel. And then at last, to show this whole plot, I'll say plt.show. I'm executing this specific cell. You shall see a graph which looks similar to the image in this slide. I hope you could successfully generate a graph this summarizes my teach one and with this we conclude the module of reading and plotting the data using Python. Thank you for taking your time to go through my presentation and please let me know if you have any questions.